fire of God interacting upon each other, till all fires blend and blaze until all that exists is passed through the fire from a solar system to an ant and emerges as a triple perfection. Fire then passes out from the ring cast not as perfected essence, whether essence emerging from the human ring cast not, the planetary ring cast not or the solar. The wheel of fire turns and all within that wheel is subjected to the threefold flame and eventually stands perfected. 3. The function of the etheric body. We will now continue with the discussion of the etheric body and take up the consideration of its function and its relationship to the physical body. The two may wisely be considered together, for the interrelation is so close that it is not possible to discuss them separately. Primarily the functions of the etheric body are three in number. One, it is the receiver of prana. Two, it is the assimilator of prana. Three, it is the transmitter of prana. 1. The receiver of prana. The affairs body may therefore be described as negative or receptive in respect to the rays of the sun, and as 98 ATRE ATISCONCOSMICFIRE. Positive and expulsive in respect to the dense physical body. The second function that of assimilation is strictly balanced or internal. As stated earlier, the pranic emanations of the sun are absorbed by the etheric body, via certain centers which are found principally in the upper part of the body, from whence they are directed. Downwards to the center which is called the etheric spleen, as it is the with a corresponding improvement in physical vitality and adaptability. These three centers, one, between the shoulder blades, two, above the diaphragm, three, and the spleen, make, if one could but see it, a radiant etheric triangle, which triangle is the originating impulse for the later pranic circulation throughout the entire system. The etheric body is really a network of fine channels, which are the component parts of one interlacing fine cord, one portion of this cord being the magnetic link which unites the physical and the astral bodies and which is snapped or broken after the withdrawal of the etheric body from the dense physical body at the time of death. The silver cord is loosed. As the Bible expresses it, 44 and this is the basis of the legend of the faithful sister who cuts the thread of life with the dreaded shears the etheric web is composed of the intricate weaving of this vitalis cord, and apart from the seven centers. 44 the Bible, ECC, 12, 6. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-V-O-V-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-99 Within the web which correspond to the sacred centers, and of which the spleen is frequently counted as one, it has the two above mentioned, which make with the spleen a triangle of activity. The etheric web of the solar system is of an analogous nature, and likewise has its three receptive centers for cosmic prana. The mysterious band in the heavens, which we call the Milky Way, S. P. 
1.250 is closely connected with cosmic prana, or with cosmic vitality or nourishment which vitalizes the solar etheric system. 2. The Assimilator of Prana The process of assimilation is carried on in this triangle, and the prana which enters into either center, circulates three times around the triangle before being transmitted to all parts of the etheric people and prevents the density of the body. The main organ of assimilation is the spleen, the etheric center and the dense physical organ. The vital essence from the sun is passed into the etheric spleen and is subjected to a process of intensification or devitalization, according to the condition, healthy or not, of that organ. If the man is in a healthy state the emanation received will be augmented by his own individual vibration, and its rate of vibration will be keyed up before it is passed on into the physical spleen, or it will be slowed down and lowered if the man is in a poor condition of health. These three centers are in the form that all centers take, of saucer-like depressions, resembling somewhat the appearance of small whirlpools, and which draw within their sphere of influence the currents that come their way. The centers should be pictured as whirling vortices with a closely woven threefold channel passing from each center to the other, and forming an almost separate circulatory system. This finds its point of departure for 100 ATREATISEOF Cosmic Fire The entire system at the further side of the screen to that at which the prana entered. The vital fluid circulates through and between these three centers three times, before it finally passes out from them to the periphery of its little system. This final circulation carries the prana, via the fine interlacing channels, to every part of the body, which becomes entirely impregnated by these emanations, if it might be so expressed. These emanations find their way finally out of the etheric system by means of surface radiation. The pranic essence escapes from the circumference of its temporary ring pass not as emanated human prana, which is the same prana as earlier. Received, plus the peculiar quality that any single individual may convey to it during its transitory circulation. The essence escapes, plus individual quality. Here again can be seen the correspondence to the escape of all essences from within any ring pass not when the cycle has been completed. This matter of the etheric body is of a very practical interest, and when its importance is better realized, men will attend to the distribution of prana within the body with closer attention, and will see that the vitalization of the body, via the three centers, proceeds unhindered. The subject has necessarily to be handled in a superficial manner, and only outlines and scattered hints can be given. Nevertheless, it will be found that if this teaching is studied with care, it will convey a knowledge of truths whose caliber and content will prove invaluable and of a kind hitherto not given out. The place of the etheric sheath is a separator or ring pass knot, and its functions as a receiver and distributor of prana are dealt with here in a larger sense than heretofore, and the subject may later be enlarged. Two fundamental truths stand out from the aggregate of facts so slightly dealt with here. The etheric body and prana 101. A. B. C. First. The fourth etheric subplane of the physical plane is the immediate concern of man, the microcosm, the heavenly man, the planetary logos, the grand man of the heavens, the solar logos, 
second. In this fourth chain and fourth round, the fourth ether is beginning to be studied, and mood is a separating web that permits occasional exit to those of suitable vibration. 3. The Transmitter of Prana We have touched but little on the subject of the fire, the purpose of the etheric body being to convey it and distribute it to all parts of its system. We have dwelt on facts which might stimulate interest and emphasize the utility of this pranic vehicle. Certain facts need emphasis and consideration as we study this static ring and its circulating fires. Let me briefly recapitulate for the sake of clarity. The system receives prana from cosmic sources via three centers and redistributes it to all parts of its extended influence or to the bounds of the solar etheric web. This cosmic prana becomes colored by solar quality and reaches the furthest confines of the system. Its mission might be described as the vitalization of the vehicle which is the physical material expression of the solar logos. The planet receives prana from the solar center and redistributes it via the three receiving centers to all parts of its sphere of influence. This solar prana becomes colored by the planetary quality and is absorbed by all evolutions found within the planetary ring past knot. Its mission might be described as the vitalization of the vehicle which is the physical material expression of one or other of the seven heavenly men. 102 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire The microcosm receives prana from the sun after it has permeated the planetary etheric vehicle, so that it is solar prana, plus planetary quality. Each planet is the embodiment of some one ray aspect, and its quality is marked predominantly on all its evolution. Prana, therefore, which is active radiatory heat, varies in vibration and quality according to the receiving entity. Man passes the prana through his etheric vehicle, it with his own peculiar quality, and so transmits it to the lesser lives that make up his little system. Thus, the great interaction goes on, and all parts, when, emerge and are interdependent, and all parts receive, color, qualify and transmit. An endless circulation goes on that has neither a conceivable beginning nor possible end from the point of view of finite man, for its source and end are hid in the unknown cosmic bound. For conditions everywhere perfected this circulation would proceed unimpeded and might result in a condition of almost endless duration, with limitation and Termination result is the effects of imperfection giving place to a gradual perfection. Every cycle originates from another cycle of a relative completeness, and will give place ever to a higher spiral, thus eventuate periods of apparent relative perfection leading to those which are still greater. The aim for this greater cycle is the blending, as we know, of the two fires of matter, latent and active, and their merging with the fires of mind and spirit till they are lost from sight in the general flame, the fires of mind and spirit burn up matter and thereby bring about liberation from the confining vehicles. The altar of earth is the birthplace of spirit, its liberator from the mother matter, and its entrance into higher realms. Hence, when the frantic vehicle is working perfectly in all three groups, human, planetary and solar, the union with latent fire will be accomplished. Here lies. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-T-T-R-A-N-A-103 The reason for the emphasis laid on the necessity for building pure, refined physical 
Disruption are too great, and the menace of disintegration by fire too awful. Once in the history of the race in Lemurian days this was seen in the destruction of the race in the continents by means of fire.45 the guides of the race at that time avail themselves of just so scary thing to bring about the finish of an inadequate form. The latent fire of matter is seen in volcanic display, for instance, and the radiatory fire of the system were combined. Planetary Kundalini and solar emanation rushed into conjunction, and the work of destruction was accomplished. The same thing may again be seen, only in matter of the second ether, and the effects therefore will be less severe owing to the rarity of this ether and the comparatively greater refinement of the vehicle. We might here note a fact of interest, though the mystery and solvable is yet to most of us, and that is, that these destructions by fire are part of the tests by fire of an initiation of that one of the heavenly men whose karma is bound up with our earth. Each destruction of a portion of the web results in a greater facility of exit, and is in reality, when seen from the higher planes, a step forward and an expansion. A repetition of this takes place likewise in the system at the state of cycles. 45 in the Secret Doctrine, Volume I, page 473, Footnote, the destruction of Lemuria by fire is hinted at, and in the Secret Doctrine, 2, 149 footnote, the words occur, Lemuria was not submerged but was destroyed by volcanic action, and afterwards sank. 4. Disorders of the Etheric Body. 104. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on Cosmic Fire. We will now study the etheric body, and its wills and also its after-death condition. This matter can be only briefly touched upon. All that may now be indicated is a general idea of the fundamental ailments to which the etheric may be subject, and the trend which applied medicine may later take when occult laws are better understood. One fact must here be brought out a fact that little comprehended or even apprehended. This is the significant fact that the ills of the etheric vehicle, in the case of the microcosm, will be found likewise in the macrocosm. Herein lies the knowledge that oft times explains the apparent miseries of nature. Some of the great world evils have their source in etheric ills, extending the idea of the etheric to planetary conditions and even to solar. As we touch upon the causes of etheric distress in man, their planetary and solar correspondences and reactions may perhaps be realized. We will need to bear carefully in mind when studying this matter, that all the diseases of the etheric body will appertain to its threefold purpose and be either A, B, C, functional and thereby affecting its apprehension of prana, organic, and thereby affecting its distribution of prana, static, and thereby affecting the web, when viewed solely from the angle of providing a physical ring pass knot, and acting as a separator between the physical and the astral. These three different groups of functions or purposes are each of paramount interest, lead to totally different results, and react in a different manner both outwardly and inwardly. 
from the planetary standpoint, the same conditions will be perceived in the etheric planetary body. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-V-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-105 which is fundamentally the body in the case of the sacred planets, of which the Earth is not one, have its functional disorders, which will affect its reception of prana, yet suffer its organic troubles which may affect its distribution, and those disorders which commit a trouble in the etheric web, which forms the ring pass not for the involved planetary spirit. Here I will point out that in the case of the planetary spirits who are on the divine evolutionary arc, the heavenly men whose bodies are planets, the etheric web does not form a barrier, but like the karmic lords on a higher plane they have freedom of movement outside the bounds of the planetary web. Within the circumference of the solar ring pass not point four six. Again, from the systemic standpoint, these same effects may be observed, functionally, this time in connection with the cosmic center, organically, in connection with the sum total of the planetary systems, and statically, in connection with the solar or local green pass knot. Where am I now? For purposes of clarity, take up these three groups separately and briefly touch upon them and hint, for more will not be possible, at methods of cure and of adjustment. A. Microcosmic functional disorders. These have to do with the reception by man, via the necessary centers, of the pranic fluids. We must always bear in mind, and thus keep the distinction clear, that these emanations of prana have to do with the heat laden in matter. When received and functioning through the etheric body correctly, they cooperate with the natural laden bodily. 46 The planetary spirit is another term for the logos of our planet, one of the seven spirits before the throne, and therefore one of the seven heavenly men. He is on the evolutionary arc of the universe, and has passed many stages beyond the human. The planetary entity is on the involutionary or and is a very low grade entity. He is the sum total of all the elemental lives of the planet. 100 Right reception of prana, and that one of the basic changes that must be made in the life of the human animal, which is the aspect we are dealing with now, will be in the ordinary conditions of living. The three fundamental centers whereby reception is brought about must be allowed to function with greater freedom, and with less restriction. Now, owing to centuries of wrong living, as to basic mistakes originating in Lemurian days, man's three frantic centers are not in good working order. The center between the shoulder blades is in the best receptive condition, though owing to the poor condition of the spinal column, which in so many is out of accurate alignment, its position in the back is apt to be misplaced. The splenic center near the diaphragm is subnormal in size and its vibration is not correct. In the case of the aboriginal dwellers in such localities as the South Seas, better etheric conditions will be found. The life they led is more normal from the animal standpoint than in any other portion of the world. The race suffers from certain incapacities 
which may be described as follows. First, inability to tap frantic currents, owing to the unhealthy lives passed by so many. This involves the cutting off of the source of supply, and the consequent atrophying and shrinkage of the receptive centers. This is seen in an exaggerated form in the children of the congested quarters of any great city, and in the vitiated anemic dwellers of the slums. The cure is apparent the bringing about of better living conditions, PM. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-107 Employment of more appropriate clothing, and the adoption of a freer and more salubrious mode of living. When the frantic rays can find free access to the shoulders, and to the diaphragm, the subnormal state of the average spleen will adjust itself automatically. Second, over ability to tap frantic currents. The first type of functional disorder is common and widespread. Its reverse can be found where conditions of life are such that the centers, through too direct and prolonged submittal to solar emanations, become overdeveloped, vibrate too rapidly, and receive prana in too great an amount. This is rarer, but is found in some tropical countries, and is responsible for much of the troublesome debility that attacks dwellers in these lands. The etheric body receives prana or solar rays too rapidly, passes it through and out of the system with too much force, and this leaves the victim a prey to inertia and devitalization. Putting it otherwise, the etheric body becomes lazy, is like an unstrung web, or to be so very. Only illustration, it resembles a tennis racket which has become too soft, and has lost its resilience. The inner triangle transmits the frantic emanations with too great rapidity, leaving no time for the subsidiary absorption, and the whole system is thereby of the Oaks and Europeans, living in India. All air to originate in this way, and by attention, therefore, to the spleen, and by wise control of living conditions, some of the trouble may be obviated. In touching upon similar conditions in the planet, both these types of trouble will be found. More cannot be said. But in the wise study of solar radiation upon the surface of the planet in connection with its rotary action, some of the group rules of health may be comprehended and followed. The spirit of the planet or the planetary entity likewise has his cycles, and in the absorption of 108, A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire, Planetary prana, and in its correct distribution, lies the secret of fertility and equable vegetation. Much of this is hidden in the fabled story of the war between fire and water, which has its basis in the reaction of the fire laden in matter, to the fire emanating outside of matter, and playing upon it. In the interval that has to elapse while the Blending, come those periods where, through karmic inheritance, perception is unstable and distribution inequitable. As the point of race equilibrium is reached, the planetary equilibrium will likewise be attained, and in planetary attainment will come the equilibrium that must mutually take place between the solar planets. When they attain a mutual balance and interaction then the system is stabilized and perfection reached. The even distribution of prana will parallel this balancing in the man, in the race, in the planet and in the system. This is but another way of saying that uniform vibration will be achieved. B. Microcosmic Organic Disorders 
These are basically two in number. Troubles due to congestion. Destruction of tissue due to overabsorption of prana, or its too rapid blending with latent physical fire.